I done watched them niggas do interview after interview. They not coach your vultures. The coach is something. Beautiful thing, man. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, it's real love, man. It's real love. Yeah, we could tell. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. We got, I, I, look, I got so many things. I got Boys in the Hood, Poetic, so many things on my list. And we got caught in so much powerful conversation that none of that got even talked about. I appreciate that because that's, I mean, that's where the great stuff comes from. So hopefully we can have you on again to talk about some of the Boys in the Hood stuff. And I got stories to tell you about Hollywood, how I got the boys and what the men and white men can't jump, not to say the N word. And you only hear that word once. But when we were rehearsing, they were throwing that N word all around and it was devastating to me and hurting me. So I had to have a conversation with them about it. Do you it. mind sharing that for real quick if you have time? Hey, real quick. That's really important to me because out of all the things I've done, I think this is really important in terms of what I've contributed to the art. Um, when we, I got White Man Can't Jump, uh, we went, to, you know, you, you do rehearsals a lot. We went into a big warehouse and all the ball players with uh, uh, Woody and uh, Wesley and Ron Shelton, who was a director and writer, they were rehearsing, rehearsing, and the boys and the men, I'm sorry, kept kept saying that N-word, boom, boom, every time they shot and playing with each other. And I was just getting really annoyed because I we don't use the word. You know, I, I think uh, I think you should be fined for using it truthfully in workplaces. But anyway, um, so then after... Woody and Wesley and Ron Shelton said, okay, we're gonna take a break and the stars, they left. So the guys, all the guys were sitting in there and uh, this was the scene when I walk up with my baby on my hip. So when the guys, when the director and Woody and Wesley left, I walked over to the guys and I said, listen guys, we're about to put this in the can and you can't take it back. You guys are throwing that word around so strong. And I said, and it's hurtful and it's painful. I said, when are we gonna stop using that word? I said, if you guys can really act, you're actors, right? And they were like, yeah. I said, so if you can really act, come up with words that will express that same word, but use something else. Come on, start acting. That word is painful to me. I don't use the word, but you know. So then they were like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. So then, went on, we're on the beach in our Winnebago's, our trailers, and then all of a sudden, on the day that we were gonna shoot the scene with the baby on the hit, and then playing ball, and it's called One Up, you know that gamemanship that they do, One Up, One Up, your mama sold this, your mama sold that. Mm -hmm. Then what happened was I got a knock on my door, and they said, Tyra, I said, what? He goes, we guys got together, we thought about what you said, and we're not gonna use the N word. I was like, oh, you're kidding. And they said, no, we're not gonna use it. I said, you guys are real actors then. So they go out there and so I'm ready to come on. And then all of a sudden we do a little rehearsal. And then they start saying stuff like, your lips so big and start dogging out big lips. Your skin so black. And they start talking about dark skin. And then they start dogging out women. So all of a sudden when they say, okay, ready? And I walk over to them and say, hey guys, why are you dogging out the sisters? Why are you? I said, I'm black. I said, white women lay in the sun when they're black. I said, come on, don't dog us out. If you can really act, come up with things that don't dog out the race and the women and all that. So they were like, hey, and then Ron goes, Tyra, get off the set, move out. So I move back and everything, and the guys do it. But when you see white man can't jump, you're only going to hear the N word once, and that's when Wesley uses it to describe something in its proper context for uh, Woody. And they don't dog out black women, dark skin, big lips that they were doing before, and all these negative things. So when I went to the premiere, I sat there holding my breath, and I really couldn't enjoy it, and I couldn't believe that that's what I did for us, for the culture. They don't use that word. That word hurts me deeply. I tried it with Tupac in Poetic Justice, and he turned to me and said, no, that's what we do. I said, I just thought I'd try it. Wow. I was going to ask you about that experience. Uh, that'd be my last question, working with Tupac. Um, I just watched the movie like last week, um, Poetic Justice. Mm -hmm. What was your experience working with Tupac, Janet, Regina, all, the, all those great people on the set? Guy Tory, I think, as well? Yeah, yeah. Joe yeah. Tory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I'll put it like this. People always say, what was it like working with Janet? I said, it was like sitting here talking to you. You know, it's about the work. We're all equals when we come together. There's no one above me or below me. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was a wonderful experience. Janet was 
Janet Jackson at the time and Tupac. Oh my God. I didn't really uh, know about him so much because uh, it was hip hop, but I learned about him once I did the, uh, the movie and he was political. D and I used to talk to him all the time. When he went to jail, we reached out to him when he was there. Uh, so I knew he was changing. He was changing politically. You know, he didn't I mean? have a chance to grow up. He didn't have a chance to grow. And you have to be careful what you put out there. He used to always say, I was going to die by the time I was 24 or 25. He said that over. You have to be careful of your words. They create your reality. You know, it's physics. It's cosmic, you know. But it was a wonderful experience doing that movie. More importantly, it was wonderful working with John. When I met John, John understood everything about me. And we had great conversations. So it was about John Singleton bringing us all together and the timing of, of that movie. So it was a wonderful experience. But you have to know, we were all working together. We were all equals in my eyes. As children watching it on the TV screen, I can say for my cousin and myself in the platform, it was great to watch you as a strong black woman, not only be a single mother, but a strong wife to a, a strong single mother to just every body that we see out here in a black woman you implemented on screen. Mm -hmm. And just to see that that was a minute, tiny part of your life and that you got something grander going on with you guys being superheroes, your husband and yourself. <laughs> y'all superheroes, because stuff y'all do is dangerous. Y'all out here doing it with capes on, superheroes, nothing short. Sure. Tell you this though, uh, it was an honor to work in Boys in the Hood and Jungle Fever. What you need to know is I did Jungle Fever in one month, which played that bourgeois uh, black woman in Benson Hurt, Hurt with uh, John Turturro. And then the next month I went to do Boys in the Hood. So those, what was so exciting about that because I'm a character actress and it is about the work and I wanted to show Hollywood that I could be different. I just wasn't a hood mother, a Boys in the Hood mother or you know a bourgeois. So it was really exciting time for me in my work, but I had worked so diligently. I forgot to have fun. It was fun in the work, but you know, I went on Instagram for the first time when I did Empire, when um, uh, Lee, Daniels. Lee Daniels asked me and I got Instagram and I couldn't believe people were calling me an icon and quoting all my lines mm -hmm. and all my movies. I couldn't believe the appreciation and the love I got. So I, I thank you for that. <laughs> so yeah. Well deserved. Yeah. We have Hollywood Royal Tina Building, Miss Tyra Farrell, and Mr. Don. What's your last name, Jackson, sir? I'm sorry. Don Jackson, aka Diop Kamal. He changed his name when we went undercover. He was Sergeant Don Jackson, and then oh. when we went undercover and got married, going into those police departments, he became Diop Kamal. Quiet soldier. Quiet soldier. That's what that means, I guess. Superhero stuff. See the quiet okay, soldier. Okay. Okay. Also, now where can we find your work again? Because I definitely want to go check this out later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, if you go to uh, policeabuse.com, you can go to the website. You'll see I took a lot of my videos down, but most of my primary work is up there. Okay. And also developed an app to help people report complaints of police misconduct. So you can find us on policeabuse.com um, or you just do a search for policeabuse.com on YouTube and you'll see what we've done. Yeah, and there's this one video I got. I want you guys to see. He his name is. He goes, "I'm Diop Kamau, and I have no weapons." And he has all of these cops on a standoff. I mean, he just kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. We we. <laughs> say one more time, you cut out. We hear you. I'm sorry. Say it. I said I love my man. What can I tell you? Hey, y'all. You guys are beautiful. You guys definitely inspired us. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate your time. All I care about is getting out the Vista apartments because it ain't no Vista, it ain't no views, and it certainly ain't no Vista <laughs> or no views. That's my favorite quote from you, Ms. Farrell. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And thank you so much. I enjoy your show. Thank you. Awesome. More than welcome to come on anytime. Doors always open. Okay, guys. Bye. Much success to you guys. Thank you. All right. Take care.